All right, Ed. You ready? You know I'm ready. With a do walnut head. Rear naked takes. Back at you guys. Live, obviously, from an undisclosed area in Saudi Arabia. Shout out to the boy. Abu Shout Dhabi. out to Ed. Ed, how you been? Scouting. Scouting in Abu Dhabi. Hey, let me see your dog. The first time appearance. Scout. Get up here. There you go. Everybody. This is uh, Ed's dog. His name's Scout. Scout, everybody. Our team mascot. Because I fucking choke his ass out. Hey, honestly, that's a badass dog, guys. If you guys are looking at this dog, that shit's bad as fuck. Ed um, trained it himself. That's why. That's what I like about him. You tell him to go to his cage, and he'll actually will, and he'll open his own door and fucking go in there. I think that shit's crazy. Uh, shout out Walnut Head. Ed, it is Friday. What are you drinking, buddy? What are you drinking? Drinking some real shit, and I know dumbass fucking that got this shit. We got Corona Extra with no lime or salt because we don't care about or that sodium. Um, so you so you drink it because of family or what? It's the you, crown, boy. Are you gonna shave your head bald now and start racing cars and stealing trucks and shit? I live my life a quarter mile at a time, <laughs> pussy. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it went, but uh, yeah, guys, I'm over here drinking Ultra. Stick to the usual, to the basics. Um, can't go wrong with this. Got to hydrate in these uh these hot summer uh, nights and days. So yeah, cheers, Ed. Cheers, Rear Naked Takes. Cheers, to everybody out there. Get into this cheers, uh preview show. The view. Uh, um. Gonzo, I, I see you didn't submit your bike picks for Pettis Ray 2 PFL 7. Because fuck, because fuck PFL. This is UFC only. We only fuck with the real shit. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I, I just wasn't interested. I didn't even know you could submit your picks for the PFL. So that's pretty dope. Uh, Ed, why don't you fill us in on the PFL? I know you've been watching a little bit of it. I've been setting up. Uh, is there anything on the PFL that you saw that you is worth talking about right now? Despite the fact that Sergio, some Anthony of that shit Pettis, is some hot ass. Like hot some ass. Some of that shit is some hot ass. So in PFL, um, there's hot ass, and on the UFC, there's hot balls. Balls is hot. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Ed. Let let us know what you think about PFL. Yeah, a lot of fucking raw, raw, raw ass talent. Um. The fucking presentation's fucking weird. They do like performance ratings. Uh, it's a playoffs, which is pretty much just a semifinals and a finals. Yeah. Uh, Pettis got bullied again on the ground. It happens. A lot. Yep. It's crazy. But yeah, not really much. Uh, it's not too exciting. I mean, I didn't see. I saw like a knockout or two, but I didn't see some crazy ass shit. Yeah, so um, Ariel Hawani, uh, his, um, his little show, his MMA Hour show on Wednesday was strictly for PFL. I know he didn't say it directly, but it was obvious that it was strictly for that. I think they are fighting somewhere in New York. I think the Hulu Theater or some shit like that. I don't know if it's in New York, like actual New York, but I know it's in that. General it's in area. MSG in the Hulu Theater of MSG, I think. So MSG has another arena, quote unquote, next to it. Well, it's a theater. It's not. It's not really a fucking. That's weird. It's like a mini arena. Yeah, it's the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that's weird as fuck. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, but um, yeah. So Ariel Hawani, he had uh, capacity five thousand. Jesus! I hope it sold out. Oh my god. Hey, that was UFC's old uh, old days. That's what they would do. Yeah, but they Some, but but back then, shit like that. Back then, there was nothing like the UFC. The PFL basically is trying to mimic uh Ultimate or the UFC and other shit like that. But um, it's weird because PFL is owned by ESPN directly, aren't they? Well, they have their exclusive rights. Hmm. That's weird. Um, so, okay, so anyways, I guess the point that I was getting to bringing up Ariel Hawani is that he interviewed Anthony Pettis and three other, two other fighters, 
and I think the president of PFL, which is interesting because the interview with the president of PFL, um, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. He looks very professional, businessman like, but he has some very weird thoughts about how he wants to, um, like where he wants to take the PFL. And I did want to ask you and ask you for your personal opinion. So you know how in the NFL, I don't think. M M O B or NBA have it, but like you know how how the um the NFL has um what is that thing with, with the tryouts and shit like right before they like what is it training called? camp? No 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 it's like I don't want to say the Draft? wrong thing. No I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's like combine or some shit like Pre-season? that. Preseason combine. Yeah yeah so combines where they like the the draft pit or the before they get drafted it's where they test their skills. Yeah. So that's exactly what they want to do. Yeah, combine. So that's exactly what they want to do. I don't know how they're going to do it, according to the president, which, I mean, sounds kind of weird that they were going to get elite officials to go out there and basically rank them and their striking and their IQ and their leg power. It's kind of what they did with the Ultimate Fighter. But it's kind of weird, though. They do, like, tryouts. Yeah, I mean, but you fight against people, though. Like, over here, they're just, like, kind of scouting you and shit. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's weird. I, I just don't know. You know, I, I feel like you can definitely go on and put on a, a stellar performance, right? Like, at a combine-style thing. Didn't PFL get caught up for uh, taping their shit yeah. and still doing bets? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it was Ooh. PFL. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that's weird as fuck. Ed, is, do you, what do you think about it? Fuck, I don't know. I mean, I guess it just opens up more avenues for an MMA fighter because even in the UFC, they make dog shit money, so why not? Yeah, that's true. Um, they they have, like, fucking, like, Randy Couture as an announcer. Um, That dude's been around the UFC for a long time, since the beginning, pretty much. He was, like, the one of the first heavyweight champions. He's, like, the first to win... Uh, a championship in another division. <clears throat> Fucking, they call him Captain America. And then Dana hates him for some reason. I forgot why. But, and then they have um some lady, her name's Lillian Garcia. She used to be the old WWE announcer, the lady, mm-hmm. um before that guy came along. And she announces for PFL now. Oh, no. But, sure. like, if you were to hear her voice, you'd, you'd notice. Like if you ever seen WWE back then, you you recognize your voice. Come here. Yeah, I'd have to watch some of the old shit. I used to be a big fan of WWE. Um, but I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That shit. That's sh- all. That shit's fucking weird. Uh, PFL, I guess you know, keep doing what you're doing. The how Ed said. Give I mean, it's cool albums. they have rights to ESPN. Yeah. Or ESPN has rights to them. It's just kind of weird that they do that and. Uh, um. You'll see. Yeah. But uh, I was watching it, and I saw fucking a Puncher's Chance commercial. Oh, no shit. Well, that's good. Bruce, yeah. Buffer, Bruce Buffer's getting some... Bruce uh, Buffer's voice is in it. It's a sponsor for PFL, too. That's smart. I mean, I, I know Bruce Buffer isn't limited to what he can do outside of the UFC. I know they don't have, they don't have him tied down like that. Um, he's his own person, for sure. Um, which is honestly kind of weird. I, I mean, I'd assume that more of his quote unquote rights would be taken away or whatever, like the fighters. But apparently two of the best women's fighters of all time fight in the PFL, and that's Clarissa Shields and uh Kayla Harrison. Oh, that's right. That's that's where all of their views come from. I fucking forget that. Allegedly that's where, that's the two best from. fighters, women, female fighter in the world, whatever. It's good because PFL, like they have a superstar power in Kayla Harris, and they have superstar power in Clarissa Shields. Clarissa Shields, for those who don't know, Clarissa Shields is uh, kind of is arguably the best boxer, female boxer, um, to ever step in the ring. And Kayla Harrison, on the other hand, is a complete fucking monster. I think she's a two time. Kayla Harrison is quote unquote arguably the best female MMA fighter in the world right now. Yeah, quote unquote. I it's it's a tough case. It's. Even she if fights he, at 155 in PFL. She's big as fuck. Um, 
two-time judo gold medalist, so she she has those accolades under her belt. But she's she's a big fucking. So does girl. Ronda Rousey. She does, or she's a she's at the Olympics. Yeah, Rousey did some shit. She did hella like shit like that. I don't think the Olympics though, because I think the only three MMA fighters that have ever won at the Olympics was um Henry Cejudo, DC, and uh, Kayla Harrison. I don't know. That's that's my understanding. Uh, but Ed, Kayla um, Harrison, uh, fucking, she's carving her legacy in PFL, bro. Yeah, don't forget it. Her legacy. I, it's it's just such a weird take, Ed, because I I mean you can like basically say shit that she's in PFL, but even if she goes to the UFC, who's there? There's no late. There's no chicks that fight at one fifty five. You know what I mean? So it's like, why Ooh, would why would Rousey someone was the first American female to earn an Olympic medal in uh in the summer of 20, 2008 summer olympics oh, she won bronze she was like she was 22 20, 21 and so that's that's what the caveat was is that it wasn't gold but hey a medal's a fucking medal first right? female though first female to medal yeah at, at the olympics in judo yeah a medal's a fucking medal though uh you can't you definitely yeah. can't hit on that um yeah, Ed, do you have any news, any breaking news or anything at all? I know there's one in particular. USC 281, baby. And it's an hour Izzy, fucking header. Izzy Israel Adesanya, <sighs> the style bender, the last style bender, whatever you want to say. The fucking, the most exciting fighter on the UFC roster is said to fight a man who has three UFC win, wins under his belt, seven total MMA fights. He goes by the name of Pautan, Pautan, Alex Pejera. Gonzo, why do they do this? I know why they did it. Why do they do this? Explain it. Uh, why they um, why they made this? Why fight? did this matchup happen? Because there's nobody else that that will bring the the fight to Israel. Um, it's very quick, but the UFC has one thing in mind, and they've always had one thing in mind, and it's making money and marketing yep. the fuck out of their their fights so this one it checks all the boxes they don't like each other there's uh you know beef from the past that they're definitely going to um abuse the fuck out of two of the best fighters currently they in the top world. dollar for that footage you think they'll run that footage oh yeah they run at one is they that run, kind they of disrespectful to izzy um i look it's disrespectful, but not. You got a it, picture of that, and an intentional. Flatline? Yeah, there. Um, it's. Di- I see what you mean. It's disrespectful, but not in an intentional way because it's a part of history. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're not gonna. They're not is. gonna fucking like strip shit out of the history books just to please Izzy. You know what I mean? He's not no fucking dictator, or, um, like a fucking North Korea or anything. You know what I mean? Like they're just gonna put whatever the fuck they want. Um, Alex but I, I see what you is mean. Known though. as the only guy to ever knock out Israel Adesanya in combat sports. Uh, he's given him also two losses. Um, I guess in one of the fights, they said that he took it on short notice and was sick and still beat Izzy. So whatever. That was the second Either way, fight. he's 2-0 against him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's 2-0 against him. Whatever. Um, that's funny. That looks like the fucking that's Hulu funny. theater right there. Or, uh, that was, or, I think that was somewhere in Singapore. Eyes. No, dude. You know what? No, there's a video that I have to put, uh, that I have to show you guys. It's like, I've sent it to Ed, uh, in our group chat, dude. I think it's the fucking funniest video, like, in the world. So there's a video of, of right after the fight, Israel Whoa. and, um, Alex Pereira are, like, standing there, one waiting, waiting to get their hand raised. And, dude, fucking Alex Pereira's son. I think he looks like he's maybe like eight years old, ten years old. He's a fucking savage. So right in front of Izzy, he falls on the ground and basically pretends he's Izzy, and then just looks at him after like you fucking idiot. Like my dad knocked you Some out. Beef? Yeah. Did you? I thought I, I thought you saw it. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, I've seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. Obviously, this fight is about selling. It just sells even more for Izzy. But damn, like. Pajeda's going to get some good pay-per-view points off this, I'm assuming. He's yeah. headlining. You know, he went from a prelim fight 
to like opening a main card and then in a main card and then boom, headlining a, a UFC event. One of my favorite things about Alex Pereira is just how nonchalant he is. He's just there yeah. to get business done. So that's calm. It. Yeah. That, that, that's I think, crazy. I think that's what I love about him. Um, all right. So here's, here's the video that I was. Uh, I feel like part about. of that too is because he doesn't speak the language. <laughs> well, yeah. Look at that. So it's, it's literally all white noise to him. Look at this. His fucking son. Chilling right there. Dog eating Izzy like you fucking idiot. My dad just sucked you out. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's disrespectful. Obviously, Izzy's not the same fighter as he was back then. He now transitioned to MMA. He's, you know, arguably one of the best middleweights of all time. You know, could be number two uh, in the UFC ever, which is, uh, you know, could, could almost be undisputed. Um, but this is one of those fights where not only is it about is it about money, but it makes sense. Why does it make sense? Pereira has only had three UFC fights. Why does it make sense? Well, one, they brought him onto the UFC because they knew his history. But not only that, he's a dangerous fighter. Regardless of having one loss in the regional circuit, they still, you know, decided to give him a chance. What does he do in his very first fight? Absolutely puts on a show. Um, not in terms of like the whole performance, but he had a fly knee knockout. Like, come on, a fly knee knockout. That's all we need to see, right? So we're like, okay, this kid is fucking real. Fast forward to the next fight, Bruno Silva, bigger dude, more physical, a guy, you know, who's a lot more seasoned, uh, been in more fights. And I even picked against him. And he, you know, what does he do in that one? He shows us his takedown defense, his clinch work. Um, he shows us his chin. He took shots. Um, that's probably the only UFC fight where he's took the most hits. Um, cause then when, when some crazy ass motherfucker named Sean Strickland decided to take this fight, once again, I have nothing but respect for Sean Strickland because he was not the first person they contacted for this fight, but he was the fucking craziest, dumbest motherfucker that took it. And to me, that deserves respect. Nonetheless, a guy who's unranked and you're in the top five, like there's no reason you should be taking that fight. Anyways, he takes that fight. We're hyping it up. Uh, I picked Pajera just because of his shit. And then what does he do? He fucking caught him with the uh, that right. Just right in the face. Um, so, obviously, his striking's there. Obviously, the history's there. Um, Glover vouched for him. It's crazy. It just worked out. And we were talking about it, too. Like We were like, hey, if he wins, it was funny. Because the very first fight that he ever fought it, we are like, feed him Izzy. Fucking around, right? Yeah. But then we're like, holy shit, if he beats Strickland, they're going to hype this up. What happens? He beats Strickland, they're hyping this shit up. They're going to milk the fuck out of it. They're going to milk it more than than Kobe being fucking roommates with, uh, Masvidal. with Masvidal. Um, But it makes sense. There is genuine like history. And it's funny because it's not like they hate each other. It's not like they talk shit. But it's still history, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, you know, he's still knocked out Izzy. He's yeah. still dangerous. And I don't think this was in... I don't know how long ago this was. I think it says it was in November 5th of 2018. So it's still like... That was four years ago. It's still kind of Holy fresh. shit. This is, this is right before Izzy jumped into MMA then. Yeah. This is still pretty fucking fresh. Ed, what the fuck were you doing in, in November of 2018? I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Oh. Being a dipshit. <clears throat> well, that's not a good thing. You got porn popping up? The Pornhub ads? No, the fucking uh, Zoom's being a bitch again. So what we'll do is we'll just um, do the same shit we did last time. Um, yeah, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, what the fuck, Gonzo? Pay for the, the R&T. Pay for this shit, bro. Damn. I know. If not, I'm just going to continue to burn fucking money. Motherfuckers. Um, shout out Vato Chris. Shout out Wanna Head. Shout out Bust the Nut. Thanks for tuning in. Um we got something for y'all. We got the rankings. New, fresh, updated rankings. They're coming out today. Uh, Vato Chris, you're gonna see yeah. where you stand. Ed, let's uh let's uh end the call real quick and then jump back on. Like just really quick. I need to end it just to restart uh, the time. Difficulties. Yes, sorry everybody. <laughs> Damn it.
the fuck up, Chris, bitch. Sorry, guys, I'm cheap as fuck. I can't afford to be buying all this shit over and over again. So you guys should just listen to me talk. <clears throat> I can spit a freestyle if you guys want to. Rear naked bars, rear naked uh, raps. Yeah, this fucking sucks. I could have sworn, though, that Zoom was free across all platforms. SMH, I should be champ. Lionel was on EPO. Gonzo, shut the fuck up. Okay, I'm sorry, Chris. Um, I don't know, Bustin' Up. Maybe he was. Uh, we don't have that USADA testing. We don't have any of that stuff. So, uh, you might be right. All right, guys. Ed is joining the room. Ed is joining the room. He is almost here. Ed is connecting to our audio. Oh, fuck. Bitch. Okay, so Ed is, is back. And um, so are we. All right, guys, we are fucking are back. Live? We have a yes, we have another 40 minutes. So, uh, yeah, we should be cool for the rest of the show, hopefully. All right, let's jump into it. Is there any other news? Ed, I have one more that I wanted to show you. No, tell us. Tell us, great Gonzo. Um, McGregor. He's been. He's kind He's been. He's been saying some he's shit. Been busy. He's been saying some shit. So let let me let me throw he's this been, shit on there. He's gonna be on the screen, the silver screen. Yes, he ha- he's been having some Twitter fingers as of late. MMA, MMA, comma. I'll never forget you. Easy work. Period. Ed, what does that mean to you? Um, I don't. I think he's just bullshitting. He's probably just he's doing that to scare people. Uh, I mean, fucking after after he fought Diaz, didn't he fucking say like, "Oh, I'm done. Fuck this shit. I'm done. Fucking May. I'm done with the UFC." And then he fights Floyd. He's like, "Oh, I'm done. I made too much money." And he fights anyways. He's not done fighting. He he trained for a reason. He just fucking happened to be in a movie. Uh, Roadhouse coming out. Um, fucking Kamara Usman is gonna be in Black Panther. Uh, so I mean, uh, just with this downtime, I think he just took advantage. <clears throat> okay, he's doing that just to cut our shits. Come here, boy. Okay, so uh, I hope Walnut Head is still out in the chat. Walnut Head, if you are there, please uh, say something. Ed, I've talked to you about this offline. Black Panther one. How did that do? Did you like it? Did you not? Out of 10 stars, 5 stars, what do you think? It disappoints me to say because I love the character Black Panther. I liked him in Civil War. But the movie sucked. Um, And the reason it sucked is because it had... It was fucking all CGI. All the action was CGI. Michael B. Jordan was just fucking cringy. Um, Fucking the Chala, like, he barely... like It felt like the focus wasn't about the Chala. It was about, like, the people around him. Um, and I get, I like the redemption story. I like the direction of the story where he lost his crown. He had to come back. I just don't like the way it was executed. Um, like I said, overrated as fuck. Um, I understand why it's the biggest like box office for a Marvel movie, but it, it's definitely should not be ranked in top five Marvel movies just because it, it wasn't good. A lot of CGI, all the actors fucking CGI. The story, the story was good. I'm telling you, the story was good. Just the way it was executed. Michael B. Jordan, cringy. The Chala wasn't about him enough. Um, he had, I feel like he had better performances in the other movies, like Civil War and whatever. Hopefully this one's good. R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman, uh, a.k.a. Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Chadwick. He's been in hella movies. Yeah. R.I.P. Chad, this one's for you, buddy, and this tip's for you. Yes, sir. But hey, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, Disney did you wrong. Yeah, Marvel, Marvel did you. The soundtrack was fire though. Yeah, they had Kendrick. SZA had like some cool songs. Yeah, Kendrick, Kendrick and SZA. I really like the soundtrack. It's just like I said, wasn't executed well enough. Um, didn't have enough focus on T'Challa. Um, yeah, that that's my hot take. 
Hey, I don't think it's a hot take at all, Ed. I think it's pretty spot on. In the past six months, my girlfriend and I have literally done a Marvel marathon because I've never seen any of the movies. What are you doing over there? Come here. Uh, so we literally watched from... Near P or what? Captain no, America. All the way until Endgame, and I still have, like, the rest of them to catch up on. But... You know, I was, everybody said, you know, Black Panther this, Black Panther that. Uh, Walnut Head told me about Black Panther. I watched it. I'm like, eh, I don't know. When it was could... That's what it was. It was just, eh. Yeah. It's overrated. Very. It wasn't like dog shit, but it was just, eh. Yeah. I, I haven't watched it again since that time. Especially, especially for the, um, compared to the rest of the movies. In my opinion, and this might be a hot take, and we talked about it. In my opinion, I think Infinity War is the best movie out of all of them. I think Infinity War was fucking badass. I like Endgame. But that's just me. Endgame's good too. The Endgame was badass as well. But Endgame and Spider Man and Infinity War. I think mine's the new Spider Man. Infinity War, the new Spider Man that just happened with Toby, and then uh, Endgame. So, but that's just us. Uh, Busting up, what is the most dog shit movie at Zoe? Like, out of the Marvel movies or just in general? Uh, I have, honestly, I have still haven't seen Captain Marvel. And I don't plan on seeing it. Captain, that one's not bad. I mean, it's it's because they kind of... Avato Chris said Morbius is ass. I knew it was going to be ass in, from the trailer, but it's technically Sony, not Disney. But yeah, it, it, it I knew it was gonna be ass. I heard it was ass. I'm not gonna watch it. Um, I still have yet to see the next door. The last yeah, door was pretty good. I did like the last one. I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy. Those movies are very good movies. I feel like they're very underrated, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Bust those the are Nut, good movies. Bust the nut to answer your question. He said, out of all the Marvel movies, this is. I mean, I and I think people forget about this, but the very first Hulk was absolute ass like the action scenes are cool like i i fuck with the action hey scenes. iron man one that shit was a banger oh yeah iron man one was iron good. man one was a fucking yeah. banger iron man one was fucking dope but yeah anyways uh Kamar was Uzman seems to have gotten a, a lead role so i mean hopefully we see him more than five minutes <sighs> so he, him he and got... mcgregor coming to the silver screen soon what which movie was uh GSP and what I think he was in Iron Man 2, right? Or Iron Man 3? No, he was in a show. He was in Captain was America. A, no, he was in Captain no, America. No, it no, it was a show. It was a it was um the Winter Soldier and the Falcon. Uh, he was in that show. I he was like a lead villain. Oh yes, the, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And the Falcon of the Winter Soldier. That's what I just said. My bad. I'm just confirming. One of those is a movie, though. Yeah, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. That was a, that was a movie. I mean, he didn't no, even have a lead but role. Winter Soldier is a character. Yes. Which, yeah, Winter Soldier is a character. You need a you need, you need to freshen up on your, your, your MCU, man. I watched them all. To be fair, though, this new phase of the MCU, it, it's not looking so good as the last one. So Some shows were good. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. What about, did you hear that, that Avatar 2 is finally going to come out? Have you seen the first Avatar? Honestly, I don't think I've ever sat through the whole first one. Dude, it's oh, fucking Oh, look, GSP, GSP actually did come out in Winter Soldier, like the actual yeah, movie. it was in the beginning, I remember. Oh, and, and then he came out back in the show. That was pretty cool then. So he was in the movie and the show. I dude, don't remember him being in the movie. And I'm not fucking kidding, dude. You need to go watch Avatar. I barely watched Avatar maybe like four weeks ago or three weeks ago and i'm not kidding it's a good fucking movie i'm surprised that shit is just not interesting dude okay 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 but you have to like okay when you watch it it doesn't feel like it was made in 2008 or whatever that whenever it came out or 2010 it like literally feels like it came out maybe last year that's how good that fucking cgi is that's how good like all of that shit is according to like producers and all that crap they're saying that the reason Mar- um avatar 2 is taking so long to come out is because the intensity and how much fucking cgi and all the artwork and special graphics is used so 
I, I fuck with it. I think it's pretty good. There's, there, I mean, there's a reason. It, it was like one of the best selling movies ever. I think it's still number one. I think it's still number one. And it flabbergasts me that Endgame has literally had a trail of movies. And that one hit number two. And Avenger, uh, Avengers, uh, Avatar number one. The only movie they've ever dropped. And they've been like number one best selling forever. So. But anyways, this isn't a fucking movie take or movie critic shit. Uh, UFC on, we Vegas 59. Yeah, let's let's get let's get into the it. ultimate fighter finale. I think this is the most absolute worst picture of Kamaru Usman I've ever seen. Yeah, he looks funny. He looks fucking terrible. Um, all right, but let's, but let's get into it. Nonetheless, UFC Vegas fifty nine, the ultimate fighter tough thirty finale. Let's jump right into it. Yep. Pull uh, it I'll hit it off with some prelims. Um, <sighs> let's go over to. Brian Battle versus Takashi Sato. Sato. Takashi six um, nine. What? Brian Battle is the tough twenty nine winner. He is currently two and zero in the UFC. He won the Ultimate Fighter finale against Gilbert Urbina, and then he beat um, Treshawn Gore in the uh, you know it was not a rematch, but you know the fight that was supposed to happen. So he ended up beating him. That was at middleweight though. And he this he is making his debut at welterweight. I saw the um the video, the little clip of the weigh-ins. It looked like a fucking brutal ass cut for him. Not gonna lie, it did. So I don't know why he's making his debut at uh, uh welterweight. Um, like I said, I don't know. I gotta look that up. I don't know why he's doing that shit. But you still, said you said Brian Battle um, did this. Yeah. Okay, that one is. Yeah, he's, he's two and zero, oh, tough twenty nine winner, and he's cutting to one seventy. Anyways, next we have Terrence T-Rex McKinney against Eric the Ghost Pepper Gonzalez. Guys, we have literally, we've been telling you guys about Terrence McKinney so many times. 13 first-round finishes in his MMA career. Uh, You know, two of them coming by. I mean, he knocked out Matt Frivola in his debut in seven seconds. Um, You know, in his second fight, he had a first-round submission. And then, you know, he looked like he was about to win again against uh, Drew Dober. And that would have been a three-fight win streak. But Drew Dober had the fucking chin of steel. We saw that. Um, you know, McKinney left it all out. Big mistake. Drew Dober fucking um, <laughs> just outplayed him. Chestnut checkers. Anyways, I'm sure he learned from that. He's still a very dangerous, nice, up-and-coming lightweight fighter. Lightweights have a lot of people come up, coming up. These new-gen lightweights are looking fucking dangerous. But, yeah. Terrence T. Rex McKinney, keep an eye out for him. He is minus one or eight, minus eight fifty on the odds. Huge fucking favorite. Um, I don't mind it. Whatever. I wouldn't bet on him because that's just too high, but still. And then we got Sam Alvey against Michael Oleschuk. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But anyway, Sam Sam Alvey's been in the UFC for like ever. He actually weighed in like almost ten pounds overweight, I think. So uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, Alvi's like on a fucking like eight fight losing streak, and somehow he's still fighting in the UFC. Um, so his last win was like back in 2018, I believe. So, um, I don't know, whatever, not uh, my deal. Busted, yeah, busted nut said Sam Alvi getting slept and getting a new contract. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, somehow, somehow. Oh, right, I remember, but, but, yeah, he, Sam Alvi didn't, it wasn't that long ago that he fought, huh? I think we actually no. had to. Uh... Oh. Well, moving on to the main card, we got Ariane Lipsky against Priscilla Casuera. Uh, Ariane Lipsky, she weighed in overweight as well. I think she came in at one twenty nine, and oh, Priscilla fuck. Casuera. Sometimes I think she is known for having um, weight scale issues sometimes, but her name's Zombie Girl. She kind of looks like fucking Jake Gyllenhaal to me. I don't know. Pull up a picture of Jake Gyllenhaal and her. To compare them, I'm sure people will agree agree with me. Yeah, he was in Jarhead, Nightcrawler. Uh, he was in the second Spider Man. He's been in a lot of movies. No, but he she looks exactly like Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm trying to. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not that. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, you're not that far off. This is this one's a uh, good female comparison. Brazilian Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, that that's a great female comparison Brazilian. right there. But let me. I'm gonna pull this shit up right next to her. Oh, fuck. There's other pictures where he doesn't have facial hair and just look up Jake Gyllenhaal Jarhead and it's a better one.
Oh, the jarhead. Fuck. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, you're not off. What the fuck? Yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, Erin <laughs> Olivsky, she did miss weight. She is a favorite. Uh, what I know from Priscilla, from her fighting style, she likes to do a lot of dirty boxing. I mean, they call her a zombie girl because she just takes punches and she just throws. Her last fight, I think it was against Angela Hill. She controversially won. I, you know, it could have been, she pretty much could have lost that fight, but still, uh, I think Erin Olivsky is a little bit more technical. She has more groundwork. I think she's going to have to rely on that, but also stay away from the flurry of Priscilla because she just keeps coming at you, especially with the pace and pressure. I have Ariana Lipsky winning this one. Um, I'm going to say submission. There you go. Um, Busted Nut said, Ed, give me your parlay of the week so I can break the bank. Ed, what are you, what are you thinking? I'll give you a minute to think about that. I, I um, break the bank? You mean lose money? <laughs> I'll give you a minute to think about that. So, guys, there's something that I just saw on the um, on the on the verdict app. It's pretty cool now. So back then, here, let me uh make my screen. Up. Yeah, guys. So back then, whenever you would submit your picks or you would, like see this screen, um, all you would do was just click on the on the the thing in the middle and then it would go but now if you click on the on like the um, like the face of the fighter shit so if you click on the face of the fighter fuck they have a profile yeah they they basically have a profile which looks like this it literally gives you like their height their reach their weight um how old they are where they're from and um where they're fighting out of and then it gives you like uh, their past, like their whole fights and shit. So I don't know, guys. Fucking Verdict is really stepping up their shit. Shout out to Verdict. If you're not on it, get on it, bitches. So, um, yeah, I think it's pretty dope. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, I'm not going to say too much on this one. Ariana Lipsy, let's fucking go. That's Lionel's girl, probably. But I got a uh, Ariana Lipsy uh, submission in round one. Start to start off the, the card pretty interesting. All right. All right. So the next fight is Augusta Sakai versus Sergey Spivak. Polar Bear. We've I've seen this full fight a few times already. Ed, what do yeah, you think? Yeah, he um he knocked out Greg Hardy most recently, and then he got knocked out by Tom Aspinall. Uh, and Augusta Sakai is coming off two straight knockout losses, too, I think. He got absolutely flatlined by Tai Tuivasa at UFC 269. That was the one I was at. Yeah. And Augusta Sakai was on the floor for a long time. With that being said, I think Sakai actually has a really good chance of winning this one. He is a very good striker. Uh, he bursted on the UFC scene, you know, with like three straight first round finishes um, or just finishes in general. He is plus 200. I think he's a fairly good underdog. You know, Spivak does have power, you know, but he he does have, you know, that weak chin as well. Both of them could get knocked out at any time. I just feel like Sakai is just a little bit more dynamic in his striking as opposed to Spivak. He's a little bit more strict, relies on the power of his punches um, and like his clinch work. So Sakai could kind of just manage the distance, catch him, uh, you know, eat away at some leg kicks. I think he could win this fight. Uh, he was trading with Tai Tuivasa for a little bit until, he, like I said, he got flatlined. Um, Ty had him in that, you know, close clinch, and I think elbowed him or, like, punched him to death. It was crazy. But anyways, I'm going with Augusta Sakai second round knockout. Shit. Sorry, guys. Forgot to put this back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Ed, th this one's kind of hard for me to decide as well just because how close uh, these two fighters are um, basically to one another. Um, yeah, I could definitely see Augusta Sakai winning as well, but... I think uh just to keep everything interesting, I'll um play devil's advocate and I'll go with uh Sergey Spivak. Um and also the re the reason being is like I mean I know he lost I think his last fight or no not his last fight but I think in this past three fights he's only lost one. Um yeah which was to Tom Aspinall he beat Greg Hardy he basically 
retired Greg Hardy from the fucking from the UFC. Um, I don't know. I I, I just think uh, Spivak has a little bit more. Uh, he's uh, he does have a uh, more wins in the past five fights than um, Augusta Sakai. Uh, so this is more of me just playing devil's advocate, and I think I'm just gonna go with Spivak. Uh, knockout round two. All right. Justin that agrees with you, Spivak. Knockout round two. Oh, All right, shit. moving on. Nice. This is the first half of the Ultimate Fighter Season 30 finale. I did watch the season. It was pretty interesting. Not that much drama, but nonetheless. Um, so we got Brogan Walker against Juliana Miller. Juliana Miller, it, Miller is actually fighting out of, I think, San Diego. Brogan Walker is fighting out of hey. Guam. She moved there. Kind of weird. Uh, Juliana Miller was the youngest contestant. I think she's like at the age of 27. Brogan Walker, nonetheless, is scrappy. Um, you know, she can. she's fast. She can take punches. She can deliver. You know, she scrambles real well. Juliana Miller, you know, I kind of counted her out. I thought she was going to lose both her fights that she fought in. Uh, but, I mean, she's a fucking dog. Like, she has a chin. She takes shots. She has power. You know, she's very disciplined on the ground. She knows her jiu-jitsu. I actually have Juliana Miller winning this one by decision. Wow. Yeah, I was, she said, you said she's fighting out of um, SD, SD, right? Yeah, I don't know too much about either fighter. I, I didn't watch um, the Ultimate Fighter at all this year because uh, I can't afford ESPN Plus. It's too expensive. Um, but it's, it's kind of tough. Because one is barely getting into the scene. She's three and one, and the other one has a little bit more experience. I'm just basing it off of what the UFC has to offer. One's five seven, the other one's five four. Um I don't know. Usually whenever people on the are on the come up, it's usually in that age group. So I'm gonna just say fuck it. I'm gonna have to ride with California on this one. Uh this is out of complete. She's actually twenty six. Holy shit. She's she's around my age. Um but yeah, I'm just gonna have to ride with California on this one. Uh, Juliana Miller got a fan right Killer here. Killer Miller. Yep, you got a fan right here. Um, and I say she flatlines her in round one. Fuck yeah, some hot Damn. take. Well, let's go. You want to hear a hot take? I got you for this next one. Uh, tough thirty second half finale. This is the heavyweights. Um, both of these are fighting for Team Pena. Uh, team Amanda only has one person actually representing her team. It was Brogan Walker, where Miller represents Pena. But still, um, but yeah, just based on the show, Zach Paga, he's a you know former NFL player. He had a short, tiny little stay, and then he became like a cop or something. And then he trains. Um, fuck, I, I, I don't want to say Colorado. I don't think it's Colorado, but it's like somewhere Midwest, like Wisconsin or something. I can't really remember. But he's still, he trains at a very good gym, um, a very good camp. And, uh, you know, it's evident, like, this guy, he, he talks a talk. He, you know, he says that he's the best fighter. He says that he wants to fight a lot of heavyweights. He's actually already called out heavyweights. He's never fought in heavyweight prior to, um, oh, yeah, I think it is Colorado. He fights from elevation. Uh-oh. Yeah. So he, he's trained with people like uh, Curtis Blades um, in, in his gym. Lot, lot of different fucking uh, MMA fighters there. I mean, Corey Sanhagen's in the gym, Neil Magny. So he's trained with some guys down there at Elevation. He actually said that he trained with Kamara or Mohamed Uzman for about two years uh, prior to Tough. So he he said that he pictured both of them being in the finale. So he is a little bit lighter than Mo Uzman, but Mo Uzman, look at him, he's fucking shredded. He's jacked, former um, you know collegiate football player. A lot of things going from obviously his brother of uh, Kamaru during the show. You know, he probably was the most emotional person, but, and, you know, it's fine. He had reason to, I guess. But Zach Paga, you know, he looked very confident. He's just a family guy. He goes in there, does his thing, fights. Anyways, <clears throat> watching both of their fights, Zach Paga looks miles better. His striking is so much faster, so much crisper. His defense, his working, you know, his his ground game, everything. He didn't even display much ground game because he didn't need to. Whereas Mo Uzman looks very shaky. He looks stiff. 
one dimensional. He literally relies on like his fucking overhands, his power. He doesn't know what a jab is from the show, you know? Um, you know, he just takes a lot of unnecessary shots. He just throws unnecessary shots, puts his head down a lot. Um, I thought he lost his last fight to that Eduardo Espinosa guy, but he ended up winning by decision. Fine, whatever. Uh, Zach Paga literally said at the end of the show, like, oh, you know, in front of all these people at UFC uh, and the UFC, like, I'm going to piece him up on live TV. Uh-huh. And I think he very well is. I actually have Zach Paga winning this one, knockout round one. Nice. Ed, that was an amazing take. You know, you you definitely are very knowledgeable. You understand um, uh, techniques to an extent and all of this stuff. You have some pretty good takes. You're positive on your predictions. I'm just going to ask you two questions. Three, sure. actually. And then we'll get on with it. So, Usman is, or Muhammad is, is uh, Kamaru's brother, right? And Usman's going to be on Black Panther, right? Tomorrow is, yeah. Do we like Black Panther? I really don't like the movie. All right, that's enough. So those are my three questions. That, that's I like enough the to, character, not the movie. That's enough to tell me if we don't like Black Panther, we don't like Usman, therefore we don't like Muhammad. So I'm going to go with the boy, Zach. Uh, and I think he's in a win decision. Zach Pauga. All right. Oh, boy. It's all getting right. nice. So this is where, like, oh, the main, interesting... Main is getting nice. Yeah, this is where all the great, interesting fights are going to start coming um around. So I'm surprised... Dude, this fight right here could probably headline. Maybe not Jeff Neal because he's a little lower on the rankings, but this right here in itself can probably headline. So we got Vicente Luque at rank number six versus Jeff Neal at rank number 13, and this is in the welterweight division. Um. Yep. Ed, this is Jeff Neal. You met his dad, right? Yeah, uh, at UFC That's 269, right. before the weigh-ins or the the press conference, actually, I was getting a beer, and then I was in line. I was talking to a guy. He's like, "Oh, I came to watch uh, my son," and I was like, "Oh, who's your son?" He's like, "Jeff Neal." I was like, "Oh shit, cool." Uh, That's where he fought Santiago <laughs> Ponzinibbio. Put on a pretty good performance. It was in the middle of the card. Um, not the most exciting fight, honestly. It was just a lot of like, uh, you know. Minor contact, not much trading, not much excitement. Uh, Jeff Neal won. I mean, he obviously won. I think he won, clearly won. Uh, but fucking Vicente Luque is a whole-ass different beast uh, from Santiago Ponzinibbio. The only thing is, the only thing that scares me is, Belil Muhammad seems to have the blueprint on Vicente Luque because I thought Luque was going to go in there, you know, smash on the guy. Fucking Belil didn't even have to rely on his wrestling too much. He did take him down from time to time, but still, like, you know, what did he do? He played the distance. He got in, got his shots, got out. You know, he Luke couldn't figure him out, couldn't get his timing down. And I don't know. You know, it, it's not like Belil's the most fucking exciting striker. So maybe Jeff Neal could do the same thing. So I think he has the potential to maybe pull off an upset. Uh, but regardless, I'm still going Vicente Luque here. I'm going to have a by decision. I think if the fight's going to be finished, Luque would finish the fight. I don't think it'll happen the other way around. Yeah. But that's why it's so close on the odds. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, what is the odds anyway? Let, let me, let me look at that. It's minus 180 for Luke. So he is like a sizable favorite, but yeah. still not as much as you'd really expect. Like if you had those two fighting last year, it'd be like minus negative 500 two. for Luke. Uh, I don't, I, 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 dude, I think as of now, it should be like a negative 220 or like a 250 ish. That's kind of weird. It could be. Yeah. That's kind of weird. I don't know what I the think fuck it's happened. from his last performance though. Yeah, but like yeah, the thing about Bala Muhammad is that he's just he's a great wrestler, and I mean to be honest, that's all he fucking did. He didn't very minimal ground and pound shit like that, whatever. Um, well, I mean Bala Muhammad's wrestling definitely outpowered Vicente Luque's uh jujitsu game. Um, Jeff Neal, on the other hand, if I remember right from his last performance, it was very lackluster. It was it were they were both on the feet. Ponzinibbio and Jeff Neal, but nothing very crazy happened. It was just a lot of like one, two here, one, two there. And eventually Jeff Neal got more of those um, connections than uh, Ponzinibbio did. Like I said, there wasn't nothing too exciting. So I feel like if Jeff Neal fights the same way he did in his last fight, it, it should be night and day that Vicente Luque will win. 
Because the thing about Vicente Luque is like whenever he swings, he's going to swing and he's going to get in there. You know what I mean? Jeff Neal, very rarely did I see him throw any big power punches in his last fight. It was just more like a, a one, two here, one, two there. You know what I mean? Get out of the way. Okay, one jab. You know what I mean? It was, not, it was nothing crazy. Now, on the other hand, if Vicente Luque takes him down, it's it's over. There, there, there's no like question about it. I think it's over. Yeah, um, his ground game's superior. Yeah. So I and I think it's gonna go to the ground. You know what I mean? I, I think it's gonna be a submission in round number two, actually. So, but yeah, uh, we're, uh, nonetheless, shout out Jeff Neal. Shout out Jeff Neal's dad. You know we have um a connection with Jeff Neal's dad, so we just want to give you a quick shout out. If you ever come across this video, cheers to you. Shout out Jeff Neal, the boy. Shout out to the pops. Yep, that was cool. Um, Busted Nut said. I would knock him out, and I think he's referring to Muhammad. I mean, that's a pretty fucking hot take, if you ask me. No offense. <clears throat> so, alrighty, guys. Um, so now the main event, Thiago. Yes, sir. I I'm gonna call him Thor. Thiago, since we're on the fucking been talking about these Marvel movies, Thiago, Thor, Santos. Versus Jamal, Sweet Dreams Hill. Ed, let him know. Well, if we start with Tiago Santos, I mean, what can we say about the guy? He went split decision with John Jones. A lot of people thought he might have won that fight. Um, he did get submitted by Glover to share. But, you know, like, I, like comparing to Anthony Johnson, he's one of those guys that was able to kind of turn around his career. Um, after a couple, you know, stumps from fighting John Jones, I mean, right after he fought John Jones, he went on a two-fight losing streak. He lost to Alexander Rakesh. He lost to Glover Teixeira. But then he comes out and he fights Johnny Walker in what what, what was one of the most anticlimactic fights. Neither of these guys were going at it. It just felt like they weren't, you know, given much. Fuck, our time's already going to run out. Anyways, uh, he fought Ma Magomed Ankalaev. You know, he got pieced up, whatever. Whereas Jamal Hill is a completely different beast. Yes, he lost to Paul Craig. Yes, Paul Craig fucking, like, popped out his arm. Whatever. He knows what he did. He rushed it. He didn't need to get in there with Paul Craig. But this guy has absolute fucking power. Multiple fucking um, first-round knockouts, first-round victories in the first, like, minutes of fights. Uh, he's 10-1. and one. In total, he only has one loss, that being in the UFC. So, I mean, you know, from when he first started, he, he's always been knocking guys out. Ovin St. Pru, um, Jimmy Crew, another jiu-jitsu guy, and uh, Johnny Walker fucking flatlined him, one of the fucking most viral knockouts that we've seen. Uh, so, I mean, I like both these guys. You know, I feel like Tiago Santos, the fact that he has more experience fighting in five-round fights is definitely going to help him because I don't know the cardio. I don't know the gas take of Jamal Hill. But still, they call him Sweet Dreams for a reason. I got Jamal Hill, knockout, round two. Hot-ass take. Um, Fuck it. I believe my boy. Sweet Dreams. Uh, <laughs> Busted Nut said, I like Jamal Hill because of his tat or whatever, some shit like yeah, that. What, what does it say? Oh, fuck. Two thumbs up. Does that say forbidden? His, his mustache looks funny. I don't know. Why does he have his nose like that? It's like he's like exhaling. He has a choppy ass mustache. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyways, okay, look. So, Thiago, so I feel like both e either or can win this fight, in all honesty. Either or can really win this fight. I feel like if, if Thiago Santos gets in a, on some sort of rhythm, I feel like it'd be too much for Jamal Hill and vice versa. I think with Jamal Hill in his past few fights, he's, he's looked pretty fucking good. He completely obliterated, completely flatlined his last opponent, which was Johnny Walker. And then Jimmy Crew, he beat him too. Lost to uh, Paul Craig, and that was his first loss inside the UFC. So he only has one loss in his whole MMA career. Thiago Santos, on the other hand, he is obviously a little bit more seasoned which could play a big factor in this fight. He, um, you know, he fought people like John Jones. He also beat uh, Johnny Walker. He just lost to Makamed Ankalaev. He has, he has a pretty imp impressive uh, resume as far as who he's fought, not so much of, as far as who he's beat, um, which I feel like definitely gives it a very, 
oh, this is going to be close type of deal. But I don't know, dude. I, I, I just got to roll. Six minutes, boy. I just got to I just got to roll with the boy Jamal Hill on this one. I, I feel like he's going to get the job done. And I don't think um, Ed has that much of a hot take. Maybe the knockout part is his hot take. But I think this fight will go to decision. Um. So fuck it. I, I got Jamal Hill a uh, decision. Uh, Busted Nuts right. said, uh, how does Ed meet a fighter everywhere he goes? Ed? He just calls him up. They know. They know RNT's in the, in the house, in the vicinity. They me up. But with that being said, wrapping up the card, we got our picks. Gonzo, hopefully you can make a cool TikTok out of it. Whatever. Um, Still, we're going to uh, go ahead and move into our fan rankings. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for this. I don't know who's here, but if you are here, you're about to know where you're at. We got sitting at the bottom spot. Jensner 20. Where the fuck has she been? Inactive as fuck. No ranking. At number six, the very uh, next to the bottom spot, we got Aaron. The boy Aaron. He's been losing to everyone. He's at rank six. Following him is Jim 5.0, Jim Mustang 5.0. Rocking the beard, but not rocking the rankings. At number <laughs> four, we got Ricardo Rios. He is coming off his first career win. Congratulations to him. We got Ricky at number four. At number three, Wana Head. Wana Head coming out some good wins, gets, getting some steam. Um, so there he goes. At number two, we got Chris, the number two contender. Uh, Chris is a former champion. He did lose it to, you know, one of the most decorated fans in our rankings and Busta Nut. But Busta Nut is the number one contender. He's most likely to get the next title shot. Lionel Kamas is our champion. Big upset. Um, crazy card in which they, they picked. Uh, but um, Busta Nut ended up riding with, uh, what's his name, Sean Strickland. So that kind of messed him up. Anyways, doesn't matter. That's who we got. Those are our rear nigga take fan rankings. Uh, Bustin Gonzo, what Nut, do you think? Bustin Nut 29 said Lionel was definitely on EPO. CEO of EPO, <laughs> baby. That could be his... If you uh, ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That could be his his new uh, alter ego. I don't have much to say about it, guys. You know it's all fun. I don't give a shit. You know, uh, Lionel, we owe you a shirt. Uh, Bustin Nut, fuck your shirt. We completely forgot about it. But Lionel, Gonzo, we... Gonzo, tell him what's new. What's new? What changed hands this weekend? Uh, this past oh, weekend. Oh, that's right. I didn't bring it, but uh, I just picked up my belt. It's home. I'm going to keep it over there for a bit until it's time to bring that motherfucker out. So it's going to be chilling over there in the back. Gonzo is once again the champion. We're naked takes champion. Well-deserved win. Obviously, the only fight we had difference was Brandon Moreno and Kai Kara France. Crazy fight. Respect to Moreno, but also respect to Kara France. All-time picks. This last card, Gonzo went 4-1. I went 3-2. We had one fight different um, that we didn't. That one of us got right. The other didn't. Uh, you're not a double champ. Calm that shit down. Uh, so Gonzo is 152 and 80. I'm at 145 and 87. Bet picks. Gonzo is still ahead of me. He's at 64 and 4. And, um, and I'm at 4 and 6. Gonzo's only taking $80 from me. I've taken 85 from this bitch ass. Um, I owe him a shot though. I do owe him a shot. I owe everybody a shot. That's my bad. I will give everyone a shot um, when the time comes. <laughs> parlay of the day. <sighs> Busted out if you really want to ride with the parlay. We're gonna start off with Augustus Sakai plus 200. Pretty good underdog in my my books. Uh you, we want to go with uh Ariane Lipsky. She's at minus 175. That'll still give you some pretty decent odds. Vicente Luque, you can't co- count him out. I mean, come on, minus 180. Uh, I mean, if you get those three fights, I'm not even going to go with the main event because that one might be a little bit closer. Um, but still, that'll give you some pretty decent odds. I'd say at least plus 500. So uh, get your money in there. <laughs> get your money. Vicente Luque, Augusta Sakai, Ariane Lipsky. It's a nice parlay. Don't put in Terrence McKinney, though. He's way too high. Um, Yeah, guys, this is random. I just wanted to finish off with a, a random-ass shorts. I was watching some shorts. Um. So this is uh called the most disrespectful move in basketball history. So it looks like this dude he's playing against a cop, and eventually it was so disrespectful that the cop arrested the guy. Oh I mean, shit! I mean, I would too. That's kind of fucked up. What the fuck, bro? He's a convict. All for just crossing him up. 
Oh yeah, he did him dirty. That's what? a foul. Fucking cops. Dirty cops. Look, look, he's playing dirty, <laughs> fouling him and shit. Dirty. Well, well, guys, that wraps up the show. We only have less than a minute left. I'm Gonzo. Uh that's the boy Ed over there. Yeah, we will see here. you guys in um the here. post show for UFC Vegas 59. Everyone have a great night. Shout out to Scout. Shout out to Ed. Shout out to everybody here. Peace out. We'll see you guys on the next one. Deuce.